Everybody who's in your way aspire to be the best, the number one. The bottom is too crowded for you to be there. Get to the top. Work hard for it. Wake up early and sleep late to get there. But you won't be able to be at the top unless you defeat your biggest enemy and that is yourself. Your will has to be your strongest asset. Every day try to answer this question. Are you doing your best? Are you giving all what you got? Can you look yourself in the mirror and honestly say I'm doing my best? Because if you can, you're definitely lying to yourself. You cannot be at your best at any moment because you are constantly changing and your best is moving and changing scale. There is always room for doing better. You can always do more, you can always find a way to develop and to sharpen your mind and skills. There's somebody out there who wants your spot. You're not the only one applying for that job, you're not the only one participating in that bodybuilding competition. You're not the only one trying to go to the NFL or the NBA. And that's why you have to outwork your rivals and your competitors. You have to do a little more than the one who's trying to get what you're trying to get. I dare you, I double dare you to get to success without excellence. I dare you to try to shortcut success. It's not going to happen, because there's no shortcuts to success. There's no way around it. You, you gotta grind from down to dusk. You gotta have to know that you can do it. You have what you need to outwork everybody. Get your mindset right and unleash the beast in you. Some people just, they get on the show and they think, you know, I don't have to work anymore, I don't have to work as hard, or if I get an investor, it'll be easier, and it never works that way. Or um, they just, they stop paying attention to detail, yeah. right? I've had a couple companies where it's like, all right, you know, I'll hire people to do all the work. It's your company. Yep. It's your baby. Yep. Yep. You've got to do, you You know, if you're not going to do the work, who is? And I've always felt, you know, in terms of leadership, that my job is to put everybody around me in a position to succeed. And if I'm walking around the arena here, I'm picking up junk on the ground. I'm, you know, helping customers. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, convey to everybody that there's not a job that you would do that I wouldn't do myself. Mm. And a lot of entrepreneurs that fail, they lose, they lose track of that. They think, you know, I'm the boss. I mean, I, I had I had a job one time, and I was a horrible employee, where you know the the president of the company spent more time telling me how I should dress than trying to help me close sales. Yeah. You know, so you've got to do the work, yeah. and, and that's key. People want to know where I find my strength at, where I get my strength. I get it from a lot of places, but right now, this morning, I'm getting it from. There's not a that's up. There's not a car. There's not a person. Everybody's in their bed, sleep, dreading that it's a Monday. Hey, it's a Monday, and I'm loving it. I'm loving that where everybody's getting weaker, I'm getting stronger. It's not about the running, the swimming, the push-ups, the sit-ups. It's about what those things do for your mentality. You don't get better on the daggone couch. You get better by coming out here and getting the f after it every daggone day. We talk about hard work all the time. It's like, you know, man, if you got to get up every single morning and remind yourself how hard you need to work, you probably need to choose a different profession, you know? Because that shouldn't be there. Because I, I wake up in the morning excited to get to it. You know, if I'm not training, I'm missing it. If I'm not watching a game of basketball, I miss it. I, you know, there's no place I'd rather be. And if you have that feeling, then you're truly doing what God has put you on this earth to do. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, um, to be a sponge. But you always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league. But you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport that me coming in at 17, I hated when like my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow, right? Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice. And like, you know, <laughs> you know Nick Van Exel would come up and say, are you okay? I'm like, what? what? <laughs> Mao, are you okay? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? You know, so like, I always had that extra chip on my shoulder. So like every day in practice for me was really trying to annihilate everybody that, was, that I was playing against. 
where I got my work ethic from was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, yeah. and you still want to be at the top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn through hard work, and I can beat the Val Victorian school, but I got put in 10 hours more a day mm -hmm. than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy, that, that Val Victorian study for an hour, and you know I caught you. I caught you, and I am dumb. But I have the work ethic to catch you. That's where David Gagas got really invented. Yeah. Was at a kitchen table with 20 spiral notebooks that were empty. And then three months right later, yeah. they were full. And when you can go through that, I still have them in my storage unit. You go through these spiral notebooks of your life, and you realize this is how I learned. This is unbelievable. There's no miles. It's not about the miles. It's that having a discipline every day to say, for me to learn this one math problem, it's gonna take me 10 hours. Wow. And that's where it, and you realize through hard work, you can do, you can outwork anybody, mm -hmm. no matter how badass they are. But that's the part people don't wanna yeah. dive into. Yeah. The, the only thing that, that I can see, and you can never really look at yourself, the only thing that I see that is distinctly different about me is I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill, right? I will run. You would not be outworked. I will not yeah. be yeah. outworked, right. period. Yeah. You know, you might have more talent than me. You might be smarter than me. You might be sexier than me. You might be all of those things. You got it on me in nine categories. But if we get on the treadmill together, right, there's two things. You're getting off first, yeah. or I'm going to die. It's really that simple, right? So let's go back to the question about what if people block me out. There's, there's going to be two options. Yeah. I'm going to get back in, or I'm going to be dead, yeah. right? It's like you're not going to outwork me. It's, it's, a, it's a very, it's such a simple, basic concept. It's, the, the guy who is willing to hustle the most is going to be the guy that just gets that loose ball. You know, he's, oh, he got the oh, he got the oh, okay, he got two. He got, ooh, God, he hustled, he grabbed that one. That was going to be out of bounds, but he saved it yeah. uh, back in. It's like the commodity that I see the majority of people who aren't getting the places they want or aren't achieving the things that, that they want in this business is strictly based on hustle. It's strictly based on being outworked. It's strictly based on missing crucial opportunities. I say all the time, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get, get ready. ready. During that point, what did I do? Is I did what I preached to all of you, which is I put in the work. I gave up all my weekends and holidays in high school because I knew I had to pay that price because I wasn't gonna do the, I'm gonna go to school, meet some good kids at Stanford and Brown Ivy League school, make some relationships, and that's gonna be my springboard. I was gonna start with no relationships and in the gutter and I was gonna have to prove it and I would have to show up and meet everybody like I did in my 30s. But in my teens and 20s, I was gonna have to work. And so what I did was to the extreme of anybody I've met that had options, some people lose their father, mother, welfare, but anybody who had some options, I punted every leisure activity in my life. Nothing, no weekends, no vacations, zero, nothing, nothing. Like we're making jokes about the seven days, I didn't take a single, and by, you know, but, like, but it's my truth, I didn't take a single vacation day, never. And I'm sure you worked on your side hustle, I just love you and I don't want to razz you. Like none, zero, zero. Zero. All my high school friends, gone. Because I wasn't around. All my college friends, post-college, gone. I'd see them a little bit. I love those guys, but gone. Girlfriends, nothing. All in. So what did I do? I worked. I worked to such an extreme level that when I push you on work, I don't even ask you to do 50% of what I did and I guarantee you'll fucking win. I just ask you, would you much rather, do you know I used to cry in college because my dad had a liquor store and I was like, nobody's ever gonna give me credit because they're gonna always think that I got, like I was upset that there was a little something.
And he was around, he knows it's not what everybody wants it to be when they're fucking coming up with excuses why I won and they didn't. I won because I fucking outworked you. I won because I had enough self-awareness to understand what I was good at. There's a lot of shit I wish I was. I just figured out what I was and what I liked and then I just fucking outworked you. And I will always outwork you because I love the game more than the stuff. You just have to understand that. When you fucking love it, you can't beat me because I want to do it every second that I'm breathing.